Hi, welcome to the discussion of truth, beauty, and goodness. First, let's start with the previous lecture, things, meaning, and value. If you remember, a thing is something like a PET scanner that almost was so scary it, it made kids cry. So what they did is they turned it into a Disneyland ride and told a story. And all of a sudden, the kids wanted to run around in circles and go through the PET scanner. That was a thing. How is truth, beauty, and goodness different? In things, meaning, and value, your starting point is thinking about what other people want. A contagious desire. What would sell instantly? How do I turn everything into a party? How do I get other people to do the dirty work? Here you see a picture of Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer, and one is convincing the other to paint the fence as if it's a party. So you turn everything into a constant party. And if you get stuck there at things, meaning, and value, you begin to see the rest of the human race as idiots, and you start playing with them. With truth, beauty, and goodness, what you're doing is you're plunging inward, and you're thinking about goodness first. You're thinking about what would improve your life. What do you want? You examine yourself. Is it good? Can you add beauty and truth so others instantly understand why it is good for themselves? You ask yourself, what am I good at? What can I do for others that improves the world? Truth, beauty, and goodness is associated with being noble. Truth, beauty, and goodness is associated with the, the good king, the best president. The Greeks combined truth and beauty together. Here you see a picture from Burning Man. It's out in the middle of the desert. That huge sculpture there is temporary. Scientists will talk about truth and beauty. But what's missing is goodness. What's missing is answering the question, why? Why do stu scientists study a particular subject in depth? Why does the Burning Man celebration occur? What good to society is it? Math is beautiful. So are lots of things. And they can be true. Why math? Answering the why question gets at goodness. The Greeks stopped progressing as a civilization because they never found goodness. They put such an emphasis on truth and beauty that the square root of two and pi were secret truths inside of some Masonic type of club that nobody spoke of outside of those club meetings. The irrational numbers were evil. So the, the concept of truth and beauty alone blinds you. Scientists get stuck. They go from truth to beauty to nature, not to goodness. You ask a scientist, why are you doing what you're doing? And they'll say, to improve the knowledge of mankind. I might be proving that this is not a way of looking at nature. Or I might be revealing a new feature of nature. But the underlying question is why? Rene Descartes is responsible for this concept of goodness. It's such a strong concept, it's something you study in philosophy classes. His book, Meditations on First Philosophy, is still used as a standard text in these classes. But he did good things too. He created the Cartesian coordinate system. You couldn't pass physics one or the concept of statics and dynamics and mechanics classes here at Howard Community College depend upon that, every single problem. So he created something good. Goodness is the starting point for an engineer, not truth. I don't want to claim that Western civilization has a lock and key on this. You can see 
these concepts in other cultures too. You can see these concepts, this triplet, in any good art, any performance that evokes emotion and reminding that's beautiful, that's good. So it's not just limited to a culture or a particular medium. Artists start with goodness. Things, meaning, and value come from the outside. The starting point is thinking about others. Will they drink soda? Yes. Does it matter whether it is good for you? Does it matter if it has cocaine in it? Does it matter if it feels good? Let's evolve the human race. Let's dangle soda in front of them. This is Hubert's, at best, sociopathic behavior at worst. Suppose we can choose the genes of our kids. Suppose we could create designer babies. What would they look like? Would your designer baby be the same as mine? Or would there just be a chaos, a new chaos, different from the current chaos? Yeah, something new might evolve out of that. But where's the intent? Where's the will? Where do we design? Will world governments get together and agree on anything? Truth, beauty, and goodness start where? Inside. This is the process we call design. We refuse to let the folds and the cardboard dictate the shape of our box. We want a box of a certain size that we designed before picking up the cardboard. We're not going to let the cardboard tell us what to do. We want to impose our will on the atoms. Our motivation is internal. We're not trying to impose our will on the human species. We are trying to improve the human species through little tiny things that we design. What they add up to, what emerges from the chaos they create, is not our responsibility. Science has proved that light travels all paths, through and around objects. Our universe is the sum of all other possible universes. We can only help explore all paths through the chaos. Design is intentional. Things evolve. Design, truth being goodness, is not hubris. We can only add possibility. We don't know what the sum may be and neither does anyone else. Here is where engineering diverges from science. Science digs at truth. Engineering digs at goodness. Science can succeed at proving something is impossible. Engineering can succeed at failure, proving that there's not a way. Engineering, though, keeps trying until the money runs out or a way is found. The difference is subtle. Science slips into adding to the collective knowledge or truth that mankind knows. Engineering adds to mankind's goodness. Goodness is relative to the chaos of the moment. Is it good to last forever? Or is it good to fail at the end of the warranty period? During World War II, a motor was designed to cross the channel once. Then the motor was supposed to fail so the Germans could not climb back on the boats and invade England. But the motor works so well, they're still running. So it was a design failure because it didn't break. Goodness is temporary. Science starts with truth. Engineering starts at the other end, at goodness. Scientists and engineers approach beauty from opposite sides. Where the scientist mathematician sees patterns, symmetry, simplicity, engineers are closer to artists. Emotion counts. Tension, the ugly, need to be transformed into a muse, into inspiration. Exhaustion creates a void where something, some solution almost magically appears. Scientists travel through beauty to nature, not to goodness. Engineers travel through beauty to truth, like an artist. Both artists and engineers call this design. Some artists start from mementic abuse rather than the evolved collective good. That's the dark art. Airbags, for example, would never have evolved through a mementic things meaning value process. They had to come from a goodness, truth, beauty, an intentional design process to reduce car crash fatalities. Airbags are just the beginning of something beautiful. There are devices now that stop saw blades before cutting our skin that are related to the airbags. 
There are helmets that cushion our heads in the middle of impact, like a motorcycle helmet. There's airbags now being sold for elevators instead of the springs at the bottom. Momentic evolution of things eventually stops. At some point, intentional design has to take over. That's engineering. So what is truth? Evolution implies that some truth can be temporary. We know from Kurt Gödel's work that there's always more truth. There's always more engineering. There's always more art possible. There may be absolute truth, but we cannot know for sure. History is a kind of absolute truth that we create ourselves. We don't know if there is an absolute pre-existing truth that we can only uncover. We know that relative truth exists. So what do engineers know of truth? Only that there's always more of it in all variety of forms. This is why all projects have this open-ended flavor to them. It's why artists can fiddle with their art forever. So as an engineer, put goodness first. Be positive. Start with keep it simple. Start kludgy, making it out of cardboard. Chop tasks into small thousand individual steps. Reduce everything to the absurd just to see what the extremes are. Persist, exhaust yourself, expect miracles. Pronounce goodness, beauty, and truth with one word, design. If you look at this picture here, this is a jetty, that's a jetty, that's a jetty. There was a storm. The Mississippi River became so shallow, ships could not get into it. The Army Corps of Engineers was going to make a huge project and build a canal through the Delta, the Mississippi Delta. But this engineer called Eads proposed just building some jetties like these that would force the river to dig its own channel. Eads managed to convince the entire United States government and they implemented it and it worked. That's an example of persistence. Stick with what you're doing, despite all the odds. There are three things to take away from this lecture on truth, beauty, and goodness. One is, whatever you do as an engineer, it's going to sell if everyone that's a potential customer can see the truth, beauty, and goodness in it. Now, they might describe it as function repair, lifespan, how to use, how to store, maybe even how to repurpose it as a tool. They're not going to use the words truth, beauty, and goodness. The second point about truth, beauty, and goodness is that it sells a design process. It's actually goodness, beauty, and truth. But it leads to talking more about goodness and beauty in terms of form and function, another concept out of the Greeks. So that'll be the last inspirational kind of lecture that we're going to have but it also sells a design process. And probably the most impressive design process for engineers that exists is called CDIO. It came out of MIT's aerospace department. Aerospace is where you have the largest groups of engineers working together on a single project, like a rocket, spacecraft, or an airplane. So look forward to those next two lectures.